Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, my name is Brenda. We're also known as Cozyaholic. And finally, we're gonna get started with Halloween decorating. So if you are interested in seeing how I did decorate, then keep on watching. So we're gonna start off with my living area. So I am so excited to finally give you guys a little sneak peek of what it's been looking like. If you guys follow me on Instagram, then you know that I got all this furniture very, very recently, and I'm just loving how it's turning out. But anyways, now that my coffee table is wiped down and ready to be set up, I went ahead and placed this vase that I actually DIY'd. It used to be glass, and I just used some paint and baking soda to make it look like a ceramic slash potted vase. Um, the eucalyptus red leaves I picked up at Hobby Lobby and then right next to it I just added two of my favorite home decor books that I will link below for you guys Then right next to the books I went ahead and placed one of my favorite candles I actually came across this at Hobby Lobby or actually no sorry at home goods and oh my gosh you guys Seriously, I was like almost screaming in there because I've never actually seen a candle this big. I don't know why. I never knew these were a thing, but I was freaking out because it was only $20 and like the biggest candle I've ever seen in my life. If you guys have watched my previous videos, you guys know that I'm all about the three wick candles and this one has like five of them. So I was like going crazy and of course I had to grab it because it was amber glass. So it was just like the perfect mix of everything. Um, and then on top of my books, because of course we want to keep it festive, um, I went ahead and placed this really cute little skull and then right on top of it i put a butterfly so i was debating between butterflies and bats and the reason why i went with butterflies this year is because um they do have a little bit of a meaning for me so in mexican tradition when you see a black moth or slash butterfly it means that it's someone from from you know the other life coming to visit you and for some reason whenever we go to oaxaca which is where my family is from um we always come across a black moth always and it's just one of these like superstition things um it's very spiritual and that's the reason why i wanted to do black butterflies because they do have a meaning behind them and although they're not you know they're not moths necessarily the butterflies i feel like have the same representation so that's the reason why i did that and then on the um built-in i just kind of put a couple things here and there like i said i'm hoping to put in some custom shelving in there sometime soon so for now that's kind of what i'm doing i'm not really caring about how much it looks but i added some spider webs in here and then that picture frame does have like <laughs> like this random lady i haven't bothered to put a actual picture in there but I will be ordering some soon. And then just to top it off, I went ahead and added some really cute glitter spiders and I just added two of those to the frame. And then for our fireplace, I went ahead and added this really cute broom stick thing um, and it smells like cinnamon and I picked that up at Michael's and then I also added this like uh, creepy cloth or whatever it's called. I have no clue, um, but I added that on top and I might remove it. I'm not sure. I want things to stay very minimal. Um, definitely a different route from what I did last year where I went all out. Um, and like lots of oranges and stuff, but this year I just love the minimal feeling of things and I'd rather have like the feel of Halloween rather than like Like go crazy with it if you know what I mean, like I want the feeling of it not the actual look um, So anyways, I went ahead and added butterflies onto the mantle kind of like they're coming out of the fireplace um, And then all the way up the wall and then on top of the TV so that's pretty much what I did here and kind of alternated between small butterflies and large ones. Um, and if you are interested in picking these butterflies up, I will link them as well in the description. And then on this corner, I just added some pumpkins. Um, of course, I did want to add a little bit of orange because it's Halloween and we have to. So I added this really cute jack-o'-lantern that I found at the thrift store and then two of these little tiny white pumpkins. And then I felt like it was missing just a little bit more, like it was just way too empty. So I also added just another pumpkin in the back end and then I stacked the white one right on top. 
and that's basically the look for the living area like i said it's very minimal and that's kind of what i'm going for this year as you guys know i love things to be very simple so i just feel like it really tops it off i might be adding some more things and also i'm very 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 interested in doing some sort of harry potter um decorations as well so this is like what i have right now and then for my next decorate with me we're gonna be adding even more stuff and i think we're gonna go with harry potter theme which i'm very excited about so definitely stay tuned for that And then moving along to my kids' playroom. So in this area, I am like going more with like the traditional decor. So like the oranges and just going like super crazy because obviously it's a playroom. We want to make it fun. Not super scary, of course, because we don't want to freak them out. Um, but basically, these are just a couple of things that I've collected. Some of these garlands I cut because they were just way too long. Um, all of these books I found at Home Goods, but I will try to link some of them if I can. Um, and yeah, so pretty much I'm just putting together everything that I want to put in the playroom. The Mickey Mouse um, Halloween plushes are also from Home Goods, but I will try to link those as well. So I went ahead and dusted the shelving to make sure that it was nice and clean for the kids. Um, and the shelves I picked up at Ikea. And then I just added all the books, kind of alternated between big ones and small ones, try to make it cute and obviously cohesive. And then I just played around with the stuff that I had and I love these like felted things. So these little ghosts were actually from a garland, but I cut them off um, and I just love them. I love felt stuff. I don't know why, but I've, uh, I've like had a huge obsession with them lately. Um, but then this really cute like eyeball garland I found at the Target dollar spot. So I hung that right in the middle shelf and I just thought it looked super cute. And then just to top it off, I added some bats. I feel like in this area, it's a little more appropriate um, and it looks super cute. I might switch them to butterflies. It might look cuter, but I don't know. I'm really liking the bat feeling. I feel like I want to have some sort of like bat decorations around the house, um, but I do want to have it like in different places. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do it in the kitchen, but that's gonna be for a different video. So we'll see. And then finally, so what I wanted to do is if you guys noticed in the previous clips, I do have some of those really cute plushes from Cuddle and Kind, and I wanted to make them more festive, so I wanted to make a little witch hat to add to one of them. Um, so I'm just kind of here like using this Clorox disinfecting wipes to make some circles for the rim of the hat. And then um, I'm going to make a cone, put it together, and then put it on the little plush. And then I was having trouble trying to like figuring out how to make a cone. So um, I went ahead and looked it up and watched a quick video just to see how other people make them because honestly, I had no idea how to make these. But finally, I figured it out and it turned out very, very well. And then I just added the cute little little witch hat to one of the plushes the other one has like a little pom-pom on the head so it was like i couldn't add it um but i think this just adds like the perfect touch and yeah so that's it for the playroom and then finally for the end of the video i did want to share this really really cool dried apple cider um kind of drink so Typically, you can put alcohol in this one. I really wasn't feeling alcohol this day, um, but you can add whiskey or rum or something like that to your apple cider. And then these like drunken, um, no wait, it's sunken apples, I think. Dried sunken apples, um, you can add it on top just to make it super festive. So this is more for like the cute look and like the aesthetic, um, but you can still eat the apple. So I just think it's a really, really cool like festive treat that I think the kids would love. So basically, as you can see here, I just peel the apples and then I slice them in half. Um, and then I didn't show this on camera, but as you can see, there's like the middle of the apple, which is like the, the core of it. Um, I did cut that out. So it ended up looking kind of like a U shape, if you know what I mean, um, after I was done cutting everything. 
and then I just used my measuring cup things and I scooped out the eyes and you can you know have all the creative freedom here I definitely recommend that if you have kids I would use the pumpkin carving tool set um, if you want to make it a little bit safer, I would not recommend using a knife. It was honestly even scary for me because I'm always like cutting myself with knives. I'm just like the unsafest person. I'm super dumb when it comes to knives. So yes, I definitely recommend using the pumpkin carving kit instead. And then once you're done carving out your little faces, you're gonna go ahead and place them on a baking sheet, or you can also put them on one of those like little tray things so they're like hanging off. Um, either one works. And then what I did is I went in with a napkin to kind of finish drying them out to kind of speed up the drying process. Um, if you wanna make it more of a longer fun thing to do, then you can leave the apples out for weeks and they will naturally dry on their own. Or if you wanna speed up the process, you can put them in the oven if you want them like, you know, within a couple hours. So you can do either or. I will link a recipe down below for you guys so you guys have all the information about this. But once they were done baking, I probably had them in there for like an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and they were ready to go. If I would have left them in there a little bit longer, they probably would have browned a little bit more. But I liked how they were and I wasn't gonna wait like another hour for this. So worked for me. Um, so I heated up some apple cider and added it to these cups, which are perfect because you can see the apple, you can see the cider and it's double layered like glass. So like it doesn't heat up. You can grab literally the cup and you don't feel the heat. So I will link these as well down below because I think these are really cute um, to be able to see what's inside the cup. And then pretty much what you do is you just dip those apples in there and they will float and it looks so freaking cool like tell me that guys this is the coolest thing i've ever found in my life so um yeah love it if you guys do try this out definitely make sure to tag me on instagram i would love to see your guys' recreations and anyways that's gonna be it for this video i really hope that you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys in the next one bye